And we welcome you back to the show. Our next guest has recently been appointed to a new position at Bronx Community College who can address the issues of declining enrollment and retention and the negative impact that it has on the college's budget. Give us a little bit more insight and to uh, bring us some details. We're pleased to have none other than the Vice President of Enrollment Management at Bronx Community College, Dr. Bernard Gant. And uh, Dr. Gant, glad to have you here with us uh, on the show. And uh, when we talk about declining enrollment, I think a lot of people have said uh, COVID has played a huge factor in this. Um, has that played a part in, from your perspective, and what you're seeing over at BCC? Uh, yes, COVID uh, definitely has played a part. Um, we don't uh, use it as the only thing that has played a part. Uh, we recognize that COVID has affected families across the nation, and in particularly in the Bronx, where COVID is uh, very much uh, a high number. Uh, we also have some systemic issues that we've been working on in terms of looking at our staffing. Because of COVID, uh, we, we've uh, had many staff that have uh, left and gone to other places, staff that are not able to come to work and so forth. That impacts the services that we provide to students. So we're looking not only at the COVID effect, but we're also looking internally at our systems to see what we can do better to serve the students better. And when we talk about serving students better, how do we improve enrollment, given the fact that we do see this decline? Uh, I know you've got some things in place that you'd like to see implemented to try to bring students back to campus. Yeah, a, a couple of things with that. You know, when we look at our uh, enrollment and we look at the uh, our recruitment process, we recognize that word of mouth is the number one thing that occurs in terms of bringing students to the campus. We bring a student here, if we serve them properly, they will go home and they will tell their family and friends. And then next thing you know, they're coming to the college. So uh, we have to work on our services for students. We have to make sure that we provide the students the things that they need to do to be successful. If we retain them and we graduate them, that impacts the college's image, and then the image will automatically begin to attract other populations of students. Uh, so we're focusing on systems, we're focusing on policies, we're focusing on procedures that we call enrollment barriers uh, to preventing a student from completing their registration and completing uh, their classes. If we work on those things, we, uh, we are surely that we will begin to uh, see a turn in our enrollment um, at the college. So where, where do you define like the breakdown, if you will, because um, obviously you look at some things that say we can do things better, but where do, where do you find the big breakdown? I think communication is key. Um, you know, I've been using an analogy of uh, the body. Um, and if you look at your body, you know, if uh, the oxygen flow within your bloodstream uh, suffers, uh, then your body begins to suffer and uh, limbs begin to die. Similarly, when you look at a college, if we look at the students as the bloodline of the college, and we look at communication with those students as the oxygen for those students, if our communication falters, then those students also begin to die off in terms of not being able to complete, leaving the college, and so on and so forth. So we've strategized in terms of making sure that we enhance our communication at all four levels of the institution, beginning with the executive level, moving down to the goal level, which really consists of the VPs, deans, and so on and so forth, to the strategy level, which includes the directors of all of the units, and the tactical level, which includes every staff member at the college. If we enhance the communication in all four of those levels so that we're all saying the same thing, we're all rowing in the right direction, then we will begin to see a turnaround in terms of our students' behavior and the ability to succeed. You know, sometimes going to college and taking that initial step and leap into college is uh, pretty dramatic for a student to make that transition, especially if you're coming right out of high school. What are some of the things that students can know and need in order to make a successful transition? I think uh, a couple of things that we're doing uh, uh, very well at is our pre-college programs, which includes our college now, which includes our CLIP. Uh, which also includes our TRIO programs in terms of Upward Bound, our Future Now program, which deals with those students that may not have graduated from college but received their GEDs, as well as the work that we're doing with those students that are coming into our FYS course. Uh, these are things that we kind of help students uh, know what to expect in college before they get here uh, so that they can be successful. Uh, we've, in fact, um, um, offered FYS at many high schools uh, through our collaborative programs at the high school level, including Early College Initiative, uh, as well as all of the college now across the Bronx and our partner schools. 
uh, by offering that course, we begin to introduce students to uh, financial aid, advising, uh, expectations in terms of academic preparedness, and all the rules and policies that they need to follow once they get here at the college, because we know that college is quite different than high school. So uh, by offering that course and those resources, we prepare the students for their journey here at the college. Yeah. So as summer is now approaching, I know summer classes are now there's enrollment and uh, you're excited for the students that are actually coming. What's needed and uh, what do, can you tell us about summer enrollment and potentially fall enrollment? Well, summer enrollment and fall enrollment are very key to us. Uh, one of the reasons why this position was created because we want to turn around our enrollment uh, for this upcoming year. Uh, we've had um, a lot of conversation about the need to uh, build up our enrollment little by little. It's not going to be a complete turnaround in a year or even two years. We created a three-year strategic plan thus far that we're working on that will begin to stabilize our short-term enrollment and then plan for our long-term enrollment. So when we look at students coming in uh, and we kind of look at also the impact of the pandemic, we look both in terms of what we need to do better in terms of uh, expressing information to them about the VAX process and the VAX requirements, as well as the financial process in terms of completing financial aid uh, and the importance of not only completing the financial aid package, but also understanding that they have to play a role in terms of retaining their financial aid. And that's strictly related to their academic performance. So uh, we want to jump on top of them from the beginning in terms of com communicating with them through our orientation, which will be in online. And we're looking at bringing also an in-person uh, process so that these students can be better prepared and have a better understanding of what it means to be a college student. You formerly served as the Dean of Academic Services and uh, dealing with students. Give us a little insight as to what you were able to see as far as students' academic progress, particularly over the last couple of years as we've navigated these turbulent times. Yeah, I think I think over the last couple of years, you know, again, you know, COVID has played a role, but also our, our, our transition back and forth from online to uh, in person. Uh, we know that we were thrown into the online process because of the pandemic and we wanted to keep the students uh, engaged academically. Uh, but we also recognize over these past two years that every student is not uh, capable of handling the rigor of an online uh, course, uh, particularly in terms of the self commitment that it requires and their ability to focus on their work. In addition to focusing on the things that are at home, we know that when you're at home, you may have your children, you may have your parents, you may have other things going on in the household that can be an easy distraction uh, for you to complete your study. So we have to work with those students and kind of identify students that are capable of handling the rig of an online program, as well as providing some in-person services for those students that need that extra uh, handhold to get through the college career. And what is the makeup of your student population? Where are they predominantly coming from? Are we seeing mostly people from the borough of the Bronx or the five boroughs? Yeah, mostly the Bronx, about 75% of uh, our students are coming from the Bronx, uh, you know, um, and about 50, 36% of them are, are Black, uh, non-Hispanic. And then we have some Asian Pacific Islanders, about 4%. Uh, and then white and others is about 3%. So that makes up the predominant market of our um, uh, population. We are doing some things from a recruitment point of view to identify new markets uh, through the use of this new tool that uh, CUNY has provided called the College App, as well as beginning to engage the community. You know, the, the middle word in Bronx Community College is community. So our goal is to re-engage the community, inviting them to the campus so they can see what a gym that we have here in the Bronx, and hopefully identify new a population of students that can come and fill out programs like ASAP and College Discovery um, and in our pace, our regular uh, program. We want to be here to serve any student that comes through the doors, regardless of their academic preparedness. And that requires a lot on the college's part. So we're beginning to do the legwork that we need to do to be able to do that in a much better way. Yeah. So finally, before we go, I want to give people the opportunity, if you are a student and thinking about attending Bronx Community College, uh, what would be your advice to give to these prospective students? Uh, my advice to them would to understand that college is uh, an important part of any journey, uh, no matter where you are in your life. Uh, if you get college, you gain a level of wisdom and a level of understanding that will impact your entire life. Not only that, it will also impact 
the lives of your family members because you will change as you go through the educational process. Uh, and once you begin to impact your family, you'll be uh, beginning to impact your environment in terms of your community. And if you impact your community, that moves on to your city, your state, uh, and, and the world. Uh, we want to build students that where they leave out from here, uh, a complete product where they can carry on the, the messaging and the education that they got from this college and impact other environments that they will step into. Well, Dr. Bernard Gant, I want to thank you so much for being with us. He is the newly uh, appointed Vice President of Enrollment Management at Bronx Community College. Thank you so much for being with us and best wishes as uh, you look towards the summer and the fall. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. I appreciate it. All right, Dr. Bernard Gant, yeah, listen, now, if you want more information, don't hesitate to visit the website, www.bcc.cuny.edu, and there you can find out more about Bronx Community College. Of course, we do have more show. We want you to stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Over continues coming up after this.